Okay, it's the end of the event, so now I can spill the beans on the Seeker 4. Hey guys, welcome back to Shul's Flashlight Reviews. I'm here at the O Light Factory. This is actually, oh, it's a warehouse in Washington, D.C. They make all the flashlights in China, but then to get them to the U.S. Uh, market faster, they've got stock right here, and these robots are picking them up, and they're fit, uh, putting them on these conveyors, and they're coming over here, and if you get a shot over here, you can see where this is where they're making sure the work's correct and getting the labels out. And this is all anticipation for the uh, big event coming this Thursday, their big sale that they have each month. So there's a bunch of new products and one of the products, and this is going to be a new Seeker 4 reveal. So, so it's not gonna be the full review that I normally have, but I wanna talk about some key differences between the Seeker 3 and the Seeker 4 here. Now. I also want to tell you that I've only had the light for a short amount of time and I don't have my lumen tube with me, but I was able to take some measurements when I had the lumen tube and I'll tell them to you verbally. So I did some independent testing. So the Seeker 3 here was a 4200 lumen light and uh, it has some great features like this rotary UI and it's got the little indicators for the brightness level and the battery. But I want to tell you what's so new about the Seeker 4. So you notice that it's got a new hard case. Now this hard case is gonna make people really happy because first off, um, it's, just, it's just a new way to carry it. It just clicks in and there's some new features involved with this which I'll get to, but I wanna point out that, look at this. Let's get a close up of that. That's right, USB-C port. You guys have been asking for a standard way to charge this light. It's built into the holster. So really what we got here, if you look back on here, is there's an MCC charger in the holster and so when you plug in your USB-C it's charging magnetically so that means that this light will still take an MCC on the bottom like the old Seeker 3 would so uh, it's backward compatible so this holster has a couple cool features about it one of the features is that when you pull it out like of the holster you no longer have to rotate it to unlock it it's unlocked immediately so as soon as I pull out I can just turn that thing on and then once I turn it off and I push it back in, it senses it's back and now it's locked out. It won't accidentally turn on. Really cool feature. But that also leads me to another thing that I just remembered is like the old Seeker 3, you had to turn it 90 degrees and push the button to unlock it. Well, now you can still do that. It's still part of the UI, but you can also long press to turn it on. So let me lock it out by sticking it in here. So it's locked out. And watch, if I long press, it turned on. So I just find that much more intuitive. To me, a long press to unlock happens on a lot of the other lights I own. So I really like the fact that it's been integrated because that, that rotate always just felt a little odd to me. One other cool thing too is if I turn it on, I put on turbo. When I holster it, watch, it steps down. So that's so that you can leave it on if you want it on, you're not turning it off, but it's not gonna burn you. There's uh, 600 lumens now, so it's not hot to the touch in any way, whereas it would be if it was on turbo. Get a close up of this. So if you look right here, the battery indicator, uh, the battery indicator's on the right and the power's on the left. Notice that it has a completely different look than the old Seeker 3 had. So the Seeker 3, if you take a look at it, it's got these uh, kind of dot LED style. Well, this one has a very cool look where it looks like um, it has shapes. And the way they do it is they laser cut uh, the aluminum and then seal it so it's watertight. So the LEDs are underneath. And um, it looks a little dimmer, right? So if I click on here and then I click on here, you see it's a little dimmer? I found that it's bright enough in day to see, but at night it's not distracting. So I actually prefer it. Another thing that's different is the button is bigger and then the knurling on the button is wider. So it's easier to operate this. And lastly, it has less friction. This, uh, this dial really turns easily where this one has more friction to it. So this button is completely improved. Another slight difference here is you got this grip on the side here. And if you look on the back, it's got a metal uh, casing right there. 
this one, the grip goes all the way around. So on the Seeker 4 here, when you grab onto it, your hands just kind of, your fingers kind of go into that grip. Feels really great. Another thing that was not mentioned in the keynote, but I noticed it immediately, is that the battery finally goes in the correct way. What I mean by that is the included 21700 5000 milliamp hour battery has the anode over here, the cathode over here, and it's the proprietary battery that has both, but the anode goes head in like you would expect. Uh, it's one of the things I thought was really goofy about the Seeker 3, because every other light in the world goes in this way, and this one doesn't, it goes in that way. The Seeker 4 is now 4600 lumens compared to the 4200 lumens of the Seeker 3. Same emitters, same everything. How'd they get the extra lumens? Uh, higher efficiency driver. So, I mean, that's what you wanna hear, right? You wanna hear that they're always uh, improving the efficiency. Um, all in all, I really like this light. Uh, these are probably Osram P9 emitters. I don't know for sure, but I, I think they are. But, you know, like always, if you get some strap wrenches, go right here, you can bust that bezel apart and get in there and take the uh, uh, board out and put whatever you want in. They're 35, 35 emitters. Okay, here's the specs. This one was 6,000 K tint. This one's 5,000. Uh, I measured it on the Sconic, it's 5,000. Also, it's uh, just over BBL, like 50 points. Really nice. I'll try and do some white wall hunting in a moment here, show you that. But the tint is way better on this one than this one. All right, we're gonna have the Seeker 4 here on the right and the Seeker 3 on the left. Let's turn them both on. And you can see how much nicer the tint is on the right. It's uh, 5,000 and it's not really green. It, it looks pretty neutral to my eye. I mean, the Seconic did measure it a little bit above, but I mean, to my eye, it looks much better than the old one on the left, which is 6,000. And I, I wanna point out that I did test this on the lumen tube and it was truly 4,600 lumens. I measured it right bang on 4,600, where this one was 4,200. So I won't do a lumen runtime test because I don't have it with me, but uh, it does sustain like it's supposed to, and uh, uh, their claims are correct. I'm a big fan of the emitters they're using in the new Seeker 4 here. All right, guys, well, that's the latest. Uh, I'm sorry it's not my usual video with all the fancy graphics and all that, but here I am at the factory, and I wanted to get this right out to you immediately.